Hello, my name is Robert Wilm and I'm one of the series co-editors for MathsBeat from Oxford University Press. And in the next six minutes or so, I'm going to show you how to use the digital resources for MathsBeat available through Caboodle so that you can get started designing your first lessons. You'll need your username, your password and your institution code. We log in. Open up MathsBeat. Let's look first at the interactive whiteboard tool. This enables me to use any of these mathematical representations easily in my lessons. So a fraction wall, for example, I can show one, one half, one third, one quarter. If I want to compare halves and quarters directly, I can just change the row. And so I can see that two quarters are the same as one half, one third is more than one quarter, one third is less than one half, but two thirds are more than one half and two thirds are less than three quarters. And obviously I can continue that into fractions of larger denominators in higher year groups. We're going to think about a year two lesson, a year two term two lesson on fractions. When you open up the planner, you come to this landing page. Let's go to the contents and find the unit on fractions. This is a year two term two lesson, so clearly the children have learned something about fractions before. In particular, in term one and year one, they have worked on representing halves and quarters, their fluency with fractions, so working out half of 16, say. They have reasoned about quarters and halves. Is this a quarter? Why is this not a quarter? And they've problem solved with halves and quarters, both sort of forwards, half of 10 is, is what? And backwards, half of what is eight? Now, obviously, some children may not be completely confident with that, so I might need to do some preemptive teaching to make sure they're ready for this unit. And so I might practice finding halves and quarters of given amounts and shapes and lengths with a small group of children prior to starting this unit, so that when we all begin it, they're all uh, at the same place, at least at the start of the unit. This work on skip counting will become important later when we start calculating fractions of amounts, and so that's well worth doing. Also, of course, it will reinforce times tables information and just generally their, their number sense. There is a unit opener video which sort of summarises the key aims of the unit. Well worth watching. I, I won't watch it now because then you'd be watching a video of me watching a video, which might be a bit strange. Uh, that's written and presented by Mike Askew, my other series editor. So then this summary page tells me what the aims of the unit are. They're going to develop their fluency, they're going to do some reasoning and they're going to do some problem solving. But also it draws out the key learning points, the particularly important conceptual detail underpinning the unit. I might want to emphasise this or draw attention to it. So I might choose a highlighter. Let's choose that colour and just put a mark in the margin next to it. When I close that, it appears to disappear, but it's still there. And even when I log out and come back in again, it will still be there. I've marked that permanently unless I choose to delete it. In particular, I want to draw attention to this. So I might even double mark that one. So up to this point, children have worked out fractions being fractions as proportions. And now in this unit, we're going to start putting fractions on number lines. And that's very different. A half as a number rather than a half as a half of something. And so that I need to pay attention to so that when it occurs in the tasks, I give it the attention and the focus that, that, that it needs. OK, let's get started. So that's the sequence of tasks in the unit. This is what I need, a uh, border roll, more border roll, right, but I better make sure I go to the uh, station cupboard and get all the equipment. Here's some vocabulary. Uh, I might want to have this ready on my flip chart, on my working wall. Uh, if I have children with lower literacy, I might want to have this ready for them so that they've got those words available and they can start to use that vocabulary right from the start of the lessons. So let's get going. Here is my launch task to prime the pump and get the children thinking. It begins with the front of class slide. Now I downloaded these earlier just so they opened up nice and quickly. Here we have them. I'll just run through them in PowerPoint to make sure there's no sort of animation surprises. Uh, so there's a picture and a little story, there's some questions about now some cherries, and there's some shapes. So that's all ready to go. I might want to change the text slightly if I think some of my children will struggle with literacy, but otherwise that's the basic concept. And then we're going to work through. We're going to look at the slide. We're going to have some questions. 
uh, some point here about how I should draw my fractions. So again, I might want to just draw my attention to that, make a note of that. That seems important. We're going to work our way through, then we're going to come to practice worksheet. Let's have a look at that. So open that up and that's already there. That's about the shapes. Then we're going to, they're going to work in pairs and we come back as a whole class and we're going to open up another worksheet if we need that. So, and here we've got fractions of one, fractions of a single shape, but also I've got fractions of groups, so fractions of an egg box. So good to have both of those representations, that variation. Now looking at the unit, there are these lines in green. And these, these are questions. These are questions you might want to ask when you're teaching. It looks like a script, but it's not a script. You don't have to ask these questions. You don't have to say these things at this point. But when we and the writers were putting the units together, this is what we thought we would say. This occurs to us as the natural questions to ask at these points. So it's a script, but it's not a script. It's certainly not a script you have to follow. You must obviously adapt this, adapt the language, adapt the context to suit your children to maximize their learning. But if you follow it through, if you say these questions, then we think the learning and the lesson and the task will be successful. After the launch task comes a learning task. And this follows exactly the same way. Slides, worksheet, reference there to the tool. The only thing which is slightly different is at the end of a learning task, you get a suggestion for, for what next, for, for the rapid graspers, for the children to say, I finished, what should I do now? So there's a suggestion for them. And also you get this assessment of learning. How do you know the lesson is going according to plan? So here's a description of what the children who are, who are on track, who, who are making the progress you want them to be making. This is sort of what they will be doing. This is what you can be looking for. And this is what, what you can be looking out for. Perhaps an indication, an early warning that maybe the ideas are not settling and not being grasped quite as successfully as you want them to be. And here's a suggestion what to do about it. Here's a in the lesson, in the moment remediation that you can do there and then. And of course, the great thing about this is I can share it with all the other adults in my class. So I can draw their attention to it. But actually what I could also do is I could photocopy it. I could cut it out, give it on a sticker, give it to my TA so that when he's going around the class and if he notices children who are perhaps not making the connection that we want them to, he knows there and then what to do with them. So, I know what I need, I've thought through the sequence, I've thought through the questions, I might make some changes if I wish to, I've got everything ready, right, my lesson is designed, time to put the kettle on.